Hi everyone, uh, my name is John and I work with a bunch of students, uh, my classmates. Uh, we're graduate students at the University of Waterloo studying fluid mechanics. Uh, so today I'd like to present how we've been using fluid, uh, Python in our fluid mechanics research. So first of all, fluid mechanics is really the study of forces and motions of fluids. So those are things like air and water. Um, and air and water are really everywhere, so that means fluid mechanics has a ton of different applications. So for example, uh, in wind energy harvesting, you might look at optimizing the shape of a wind turbine, um, or in reducing drag on a car uh, to improve fuel efficiency. Or you might even look at uh, optimizing the best position for a biker to achieve a top speed, like is shown in the video here. Um, so in order to study these kinds of things on fluids, one common approach is to set up an experiment. So in this case, we have an experiment with a scale model of a biker and a wind tunnel in front. And in order, so we have an experiment, but in order to actually figure out those quantities, like the amount of drag on the biker, you have to measure it somehow. So that's exactly what the green blob and those particles are for. So the green blob is basically due to a laser shining from below, and the particles uh, flowing through that green blob are hydrogen bubbles injected upstream of that biker. Um, and off to the side, there's actually a camera which is recording that blob and all those particles going through. So this whole setup is part of a measurement technique called particle image velocimetry, or we abbreviate it as PIV. Um, so what this measurement technique really is, is to measure the velocity of the flow. And it does that by tracking those particles. So this is really how PIV works. Um, basically, PIV takes very tightly spaced images in time, and then it uses some uh, correlation between those images to calculate how far those particles have moved. So this is usually done in software like LA Vision. Um, and the result of this is basically a set of vector fields, like on the right side here. So the end result of PIV gets you all of these velocity vectors at different, space, different points in space and different points in time. So this isn't the end, though, uh, because how you really find out the drag or find out um, what the fluid is doing is by processing these vector fields. So this is where Python comes into play. Uh, so we know that uh, PIV produces these vector fields, um, and they occur over different space dimensions and different time dimensions. So the way to handle this in Python is with the classic uh, scientific package NumPy, because NumPy stores essentially stores this kind of information with n-dimensional arrays. So what you can do is set up a NumPy array where each spatial dimension or each time dimension corresponds to one dimension in a NumPy array. And then you have one last dimension, u there, uh, which represents the different velocity vector components. So that's really great. You can use NumPy to directly compute different quantities on these vector fields. Uh, but NumPy is missing just one thing, which is these things. So NumPy doesn't actually store the times at which they were captured or the actual spatial dimensions. Um, and these things are really important for computing various uh, mathematical quantities, uh, like spatial derivatives and time derivatives. Uh, so my colleagues and I have come up with a package for post-processing this kind of data, uh, PyPost PIV. So it really consists of three key things. First is a class, which, infers, um, which inherits from NumPy's ND array. Um, and then in addition, it adds those missing attributes, like the grid spacing in space um, and the time locations at which, at which those vector fields were captured. Uh, next is a set of functions that operate on that class. So these include things like basic mathematical functions, like taking time derivatives and spatial derivatives. Um, and other more advanced functions, which often build on top of those. And so in fluid mechanics, we often compute things like shear stress or turbulent kinetic energy. Uh, and lastly is a set of visualization tools. 
So how do you use this package PyPost PIV? Uh, it's really simple. So you start by loading PIV field data. So usually this comes from proprietary software like Deviz. Uh, and you load this into a field 2D instance. And then you just call whatever post-processing functions you want on that. Uh, but of course, not everyone is doing the same thing. So the real benefit of this package is for functions that don't exist, you can use the field 2D instance um, as like a programming primitive kind of like NumPy arrays uh, in order to directly translate some of your mathematical analyses um, directly into code. So let's look at an example. So this is uh, velocity magnitude. Velocity magnitude in math is basically computed with the formula up there. It's the square root of the x component of velocity squared plus the y component squared. Um, and we can easily convert this into code. So the x component of velocity corresponds to velocity.u at 0. The square corresponds to the square. The square root corresponds to the square root. Um, and we've already implemented this function. So alternatively, you can just call the magnitude function at the bottom there. So how about something with derivatives? So vorticity is a way to characterize the level of spinniness in a fluid. Um, and the mathematically is computed like this. So it's the same idea as before. Uh, because we've implemented this kind of basic mathematical function, the derivative, you can easily translate the mathematics into code. So derivatives correspond to derivatives, and velocity components are velocity components again. Uh, and lastly, I just want to show some visualization. So in order to really see what the flow is doing, the easiest way is to visualize it. Um, and to visualize, we provide this function called getValue, which produces a set of data um, which conveniently can be used in matplotlib to see what your flow is doing. So what's next is to make our visualization tools more interactive and easier to use, uh, as well as adding some more common processing functions. Um, and we've just had our first release, so feel free to check out our page on GitHub. And that's all. Thank you.